How's it going everyone? Yerba Mata Dude here. So today I'm going to be talking about my story with learning Turkic languages, how that came about, uh, and also maybe information about uh, how to learn these languages and which ones uh, you maybe should consider studying uh, first and why. So, well, basically guys, when I was little, when I was a kid, I was really fascinated with uh, a lot of Turkic languages. And specifically, when I was younger, it had to do with Turkish and with Uzbek and Kyrgyz languages. And I was also very aware of other languages, such as uh, Turkmen, or I was also aware of the little tiny Turkic languages like Altai. I was aware of all these uh, you know, languages, and I was aware of where they were spoken on, on the map. And so, uh, basically... Uh, I I had an experience uh, with LSD a couple years ago that really, really uh, got me to um, really focus on these things, these languages, uh, because uh, I always had this inside me, this latent ability that I wasn't paying attention to. So I had this experience a couple years ago, and then, you know, it really, really got me on the path of learning these languages without second uh, guessing myself or without, you know, uh, losing faith in the process or the journey of learning languages. And so, you know, uh, I started with Turkish and basically to sum it up or to break it down very simply, uh, there are four main branches of Turkic languages, uh, but I would say that there's five. Uh, you know, we can say that every Turkic language comes from Proto-Turkic and then after that, there were two original main branches, the Ogre branch and the Orkhan branch, which uh, the Orkhan branch, there's not any uh, languages spoken now that are from Orkhan, but I would say that maybe all the other four main branches uh, are descendants of Orkhan. And there is one last descendant of the Ogre branch, which is Chuvash language spoken in Russia, which I have made a video about already. Uh, so basically the four other branches, well, it would be, uh, the Siberian languages, uh, which are spoken mainly in Siberia, the Kipchak languages, uh, so, uh, for example, Kazakh or Kyrgyz, right, would be Kipchak languages, or Tatar, Bashkir, Karachai, uh, these are Kipchak languages, whereas the Siberian languages are Yakut and Tuvan, uh, Altai, Shor, Kakas, and there's, uh, some others, uh, there's, mm, you know, maybe about eight languages, maybe nine Siberian Turkic languages spoken in, in Siberia. Uh, and then there's also Karluk languages. Actually, there's only, I think, four Karluk languages, but uh, however, they actually do have many speakers. Uh, Uzbek and Uyghur languages have, uh, I think, total, it would be a combined uh, amount, maybe 40 million, maybe. So that's actually a lot. Uh, and then last, we have the Ohuz languages, Turkish, Turkmen, Azerbaijani. Well, so basically, you know, I started with Turkish, the Ohuz branch of Turkic languages. And this is a great way to start if you're thinking about uh, learning Turkic languages from a perspective of maybe moving to Turkey for a job. I mean, you know, Turkish is the most popular. Sp uh, it has maybe 80, 90 million speakers, maybe more if you can consider all the second language speakers like myself. This uh, really, really, you know, shows that the Turkish uh, is really mm, a logical option for lots of people, let's just say. If they want to learn Turkic language, then they can see that Turkish is the most spoken and there's probably the most opportunities for their life with Turkish. Uh, but if you are looking at Turkic languages from a perspective of, like, my heart wants to learn something, if it's not for business, if it's not for getting a job, then maybe, you know, look at, like, like do an overview. Maybe uh, get a feel for different Turkic languages. Uh, listen to Uzbek music. Uh, and I recommend Ozodbek Nazarbekov. He's my favorite uh, singer for Uzbek. I would recommend really immersing yourself in the different sounds of different Turkic languages. And so, like I said, if it has nothing to do with uh, jobs or practicality, then I would say don't think about the number of speakers, but think about what your heart says. If your heart's telling you Turkish, go for it. My heart was definitely telling me to start with Turkish, so I did. Uh, then I did Uzbek after that. I've learned 
a Turkic language from every branch of the of the family. So I have experience with Kipchak, Karluk, you know, I know um, the sort of uh, features of the different branches of Turkic languages. Uh, if you're looking for something that's original uh, or more connected to the source of Turkic languages, then, you know, maybe consider learning a Kipchak language or maybe a, a Siberian Turkic language. Uh, if you want something that's easy, that has like the most simplified grammar, then I would consider maybe looking at Uzbek. You see, most uh, Turkic languages, to you know, simplify things, have agglutination, which means that they add big, uh, well, not big, but just suffixes at the end of words, and you know, this is the way they function. And you know, uh, Turkish is known for being the language that has the most agglutination out of all the Turkic languages. At least I think so. Um, but I would say that other Turkic languages maybe don't have as much of agglutination, you know, as Turkish, but I would say for the most part that most Turkic languages are very agglutinative in nature. That's the sort of uh, foundation from where they came is, is agglutinative properties. This is very common among the Turkic languages. So that being said, you know, uh, another uh, very common feature is vowel harmony and consonant softening and hardening. This exists in many, many Turkic languages. Uh, in fact, all of them, except for Uzbek. Uzbek is the second most spoken Turkic language. However, it does not really have a system of vowel harmony. It like either died out from the language or it's only spoken in certain dialects as Uzbekistan has many dialects for, you know, the country and you know, you have Khorazm dialect, which is more similar to Turkmen language. And then you also have the dialect that's similar to Kazakh. So, and then you also have the Karakalpak language, which is a Kipchak language spoken in the Karakalpakstan uh, uh, regional area. That's also, uh, you know, a little bit different than Uzbek. So, well, if, 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 if you sort of think about it from this perspective, because Uzbek is more simplified and it lacks a lot of these, you know, characteristics, um, you know, I would say that it can be easier to learn for a lot of people, but I also think uh, that if you're looking for something that's really original or connected to the source, for example, if you're looking to really uh, connect with, you know, uh, Tingrism or, you know, with shamanism or maybe the uh, sort of more, uh, maybe the uh, Turkic cultures that are more connected to, you know, the ancient traditions, then maybe you should consider learning a Siberian Turkic language or Chuvash, you know, and uh, maybe also Kazakh. I, f I find that even Kazakh and Kyrgyz people still practice a lot of uh, really sort of more ancient Turkic traditions, such as uh, living in yurts or herding or these kind of things, like the nomadic lifestyle. And I find that you know, you can kind of sort of look and, and see, you know, I, basically Turkic languages are a huge, huge uh, journey. And, and so there's lots of things to consider and I'm just sort of giving an overview. So, you know, there's many, many different perspectives to take on why it would be that you would start a particular Turkic language. And uh, so anyways, well, that being said, I guess, you know, I love Turkic languages and I've, and I've, mapped out a lot of things for you guys. Maybe, hopefully, I can, you know, inspire you guys to get started on maybe your journey with learning Turkic languages. And how you can start learning Turkic languages, if any of you are going to say, well, how can I find the resources for Chuvash? You know, well, what I will tell everyone watching this video is, is that you can uh, learn uh, Turkic languages depending on which one you want to learn, uh, more or less uh, easily. Uh, I would say that uh, for example, on italki, you can find, uh, and by the way, I, I also teach English on italki, but um, if you are looking to learn, for example, many Turkic languages, uh, you can find it on italki, personal tutors that can help you. You can find many uh, materials on the internet, um, and I would be happy with anybody in the comments who's looking to learn, especially maybe... Uh, one of the more intricate uh, Turkic languages, Altai, or maybe um, Yakut or Chuvash, I would be happy to try to share some information about how you can possibly uh, get into those languages. As when I was first uh, discovering Yakut for the first time, it was almost a nightmare considering how I couldn't have much resources to go off of. And I know that that can be struggling. And so just keep in mind that 
uh, depending on how popular the language is, there's going to be more resources for it. So that is a benefit if you are just off the bat, if you're just gravitating towards Turkish, you have many resources for Turkish. Um, but I do think that more and more people are getting uh, more interested in other Turkic languages. You know, some people would gravitate towards the Spanish if it was Romance languages. They would gravitate towards the Spanish. That seems to be a default uh, choice, right? Well, of course, many people love French and many people love Italian, and it's not necessarily about which one's most popular or which one's most spoken. You know, I think Turkish is beautiful and amazing, but I also think that, yeah, you're going to be more lucky with Turkish. You're going to have more resources, but I also think that there's good resources for Kyrgyz. In fact, I, I found some really good textbooks written in English for it. In fact, they were really uh, beautifully written and had great explanations on every single concept gr grammar-wise. And really, I think that uh, you don't have to worry. So if, if any of you have any questions about certain Turkic languages, I can, in fact, I can help uh, with most, uh, not most, sorry, I can help with many Turkic languages. <laughs> I was about to say most, as if I know all the Turkic languages. That's not true. <laughs> Anyways, I've studied uh, many, and I can speak five, more or less. So I can speak uh, Uzbek, Kyrgyz, Turkish, uh, Yakut, and Truvash. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and... Uh, all, for all the language uh, learners out there, uh, uh, follow your heart, you know, language learning, you know, we, we have to think about it in many different aspects, of course, but the most important thing is to love the languages that we start learning. It's not about status, it's not about anything. I mean, those things are life as well, you know, but they should not be the ultimate, you know, sort of pinnacle of why we are doing things. Think about why, like from the heart. And, and, and so I really, really realized that I love Turkic languages and I love how they're constructed and I love everything about them. And, and some of them I love more than others, you know, and, um, but that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. And I, I, I really, really uh, loved making this video and kind of just free flowing and styling my thoughts. It's really, really nice. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.